Yo, what's up guys? It's RJ with Road to Liberty. Uh, I want to talk about something that I'm noticing that concerns me a little bit, and that is what I would call data avoidance. So basically, people are, I'm noticing this anyway, that people are, for to a large extent, not willing to grapple with data. So it would be kind of counterintuitive if I had data in this video to um, to support that claim because I'm acknowledging that people aren't really grappling with data. Um, so that's not scientific, right? Um, but again, <laughs> I think a lot of people these days are not willing to be scientific. So I'm just telling you my opinion, right? I'm doing what you all are doing. But ask yourself is what I wanna put out there with this quick video is ask yourself, right? Are you open to the data of whatever it is, whatever position you take, whatever thing you believe in, whatever cause, whatever studies you hear, do you listen to who's telling you that information and then do you hear the data or the, the conclusions they're giving you and you immediately say, yes, that's what I agree with. That, that backs it up, that proves it. And then you run with it and you share it. Or do you think critically, do you say, hmm, what is this data actually saying? Is there any asterisk? Is there any fine print underneath this data? Or is this really the whole story? Is this, does this tell us everything? Um, this takes me into, this, this problem with data and the avoidance of data takes me into something I'm gonna talk about in another video, which is people's fear of critical thinking or avoidance of critical thinking. It's one thing to have data and then to want to have a conclusion. But if you're not going to critically think about that data and, and think about how that data fits into the, the, the general scope of what's going on, um, if I were to say to you, um, out of 10 people that have come to visit me at my house, I've slapped five of them in the face. And I had video footage of that and that was data. Um, and, and, and it was verified, right? That at half the people that come to my house, I slap in the face, right? That would be bad. That would, that would be something you could say, well, I don't want to go to that guy's house. I have a 50% chance of getting hit in the face, right? But if someone told you people named RJ are more likely than people named John to be hitting people in the face and there was no study to back that up or, or it was just something they were saying would you apply that to me? Would you apply, would you apply that conclusion to me? Of course not. If, if I said to you, of people that are allergic to peanuts, 90% of them have an allergic reaction when they eat peanuts. Therefore, you shouldn't eat peanuts. No. You, you're not allergic to peanuts. So... People, I'm noticing this, and this is this is becoming a big issue in my mind. I I, th I think that it's almost hard for me to even say this to, to to the world, to the internet, and put this out there because I feel like, all right, what is RJ saying right now? He's not saying anything that that relates to my narrative. He's not telling me that my political cause or my candidate or my movement or my group or my hashtag. He's not validating it. He's not standing behind something. He's not yelling at some enemy, right? That's the thing. Everything these days is an attack, an attack, an attack. Somebody's to blame. Some, this is the problem. Here, here's the problem. Whatever data people are bringing forth that backs up their conclusions, keep that in mind, right? If you have um, someone who works in the circus and they're talking about how rare it is for an elephant attack to harm anybody, keep in mind, they might have good data but you have to scrutinize it a little bit more because they stand to gain if you agree with their, their conclusion, right? Just like if the government tells you, here's what's happening with global warming. Well, if you believe that everything the government tells you is for your best interest and they never lie and they're perfectly honest and they never have a hidden motive, then you're gonna run with that data and say, well, we have climate change and we need to pass more laws and we need to tax big companies and we need to have a carbon credit and this and that. But if you say, well, hmm, why, 
why why is this the big issue right now you know let's look at the data let's really make sure that this is something because if you just want to get to your conclusion it's easy J jump on the water slide and slide down it's slippery you're going to get to the bottom very fast if you realize that you're sliding down sandpaper and it's going to hurt and you get down to the bottom and it's going to be painful you're not going to slide down data that is designed to get you to the conclusion is written in such a way that there's no friction, there's no resistance. Data that reflects the complexity of a situation like climate claim, climate change, excuse me, race relations, political candidates, whether it's Hillary, whether it's uh, Trump, whether it's this one, whether it's that one, the data isn't so cut and dry. So anybody that's telling you this, that, the third, whatever, and they're slamming facts at you, Think about who you're listening to, right? Are you listening to someone who you know what their conclusion is? If you are listening to a Trump supporter and they're giving data about how bad Hillary is and how great Trump is, or you're listening to a Hillary supporter or a Bernie supporter or whomever, and they're giving you data and it all aligns with their narrative, you have to suspect intellectual dishonesty. You have to suspect a bias. You have to suspect that you're not getting the full story. What I'm seeing more and more often these days is people sharing, posting, tweeting, putting videos up, etc. that support their narrative, that support their conclusions. So that's why I tried my hardest to make this video not about my conclusions, not about what I want you to believe or what data you should suspect. I'm not putting this in the framework of how you should think about an issue. I'm putting this in the framework of my concern from my observation that more and more frequently these days, despite the idea that the world is getting smarter or that people are waking up, people are running with, sometimes there's no, there's not even data. It's just, it's just um, a link. It's just um, a headline. It's just something that so someone said, oh, uh, you know, I was debating someone before about, uh, you know, I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there because I don't want to take a stand here. I just want to point out to you guys how I feel and see how you feel. And uh, are you noticing an aversion to data? Are you running from data? Do you notice that all of the conclusions that people are holding, maybe even including yourself, are supported by data that seems to paint the picture so that there's no area for doubt right all the data lines up if you're a liberal if you're a conservative if you're this if you're that even if you're an anarchist or a voluntarist are you looking at the world through such a uh you know a telescope to where it's only clear if you look at it from your angle with with your lens if you look at it any other way it's it's gonna be blurry it's not it's not it's not gonna make sense check your data be more critical of your data. I even myself, I will admit, I have said some things to people in passing or in conversation. I've even shared some links in my recent past that I had to later go back and take back and say, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't do my full homework. This isn't correct, or this is unfounded, this is speculation, or this is a rumor, right? We don't want to be saying things passionately to people that's going to guide their actions or guide their beliefs about the world when we don't really know what the truth is, when we're just passing along someone else's speculation, someone else's rumor or, or data that's crafted in such a way as to just cut out the bits that support the conclusion and, and brush aside everything that could g give us, you know, area of doubt. If you think back 10, 15 years ago, or even five years ago, the world was a much more complicated place in the sense that when we had an issue, when we had a question, we looked to the data, we looked to science, we looked to our records and we said, well, what is, what, is, what is the conclusion that we should draw based on what we know about the world? Today, we have a feeling, we say, well, so I feel, and then we look for data to support how we feel, and then we go about telling everyone, here's how I feel, here's the truth, before we get to the data, let's get all this emotional stuff out. Let me get mad. Let me uh, virtue signal. Let me act all sad and blah, 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 and, and, and pass along how I'm a great person and I am so compassionate and I am so caring. And then I'll tell you how you should believe because that's how I believe. 
and oh, you want some proof? You want some data? Well, here's four things isolated, four little clips that paint my picture as the truth. Everything else you hear from the opposing viewpoint, everything else that my opponents would say that, that, that could detract from my conclusions, ignore all that because this little bit of data is the only data that matters because it supports my belief, it supports my conclusion. It's getting to the point, guys, where I'm starting to say, does it even make sense for me to make videos because I don't want to fall in this trap for one. I don't want to be someone who is cherry picking the data that I want to support my conclusions and then trying to craft a narrative to give to you guys and say, this is the truth. Only look at this data. All the other data is baloney. Or is there a truth? I believe, of course, there's a truth. Of course, there's a truth. If I throw a baseball and it lands over there by the tree, that happened. That's the truth. It's not according to my perspective. No, anybody that was there to witness it, it is quantifiable. If I build a house, the house has a certain size. If I play a song, the song has a certain sound, a certain quality. So there is a truth to this world, guys. I don't need to give you data. I want you to just think about that and let me know. Do you agree? Is there facts or is it just whatever you want to believe and whatever data you can find that supports that and then forget everything else. Forget everything else that contradicts the way you feel because that's irrelevant. All that matters is what you can find that supports your worldview. Everything else is either a lie or it's racist or it's discriminatory or it's not politically correct or it's unfounded. We have to be more intellectually honest. Let me know what you think, guys. Are people being intellectually honest? Is there a problem with data and bias in this world? And what can we do about it? Let me know. Peace out.